The Chancellor of the Exchequer, Rishi Sunak, has announced his spending plans for the rest of the year and into next year. This was his spending review, which he announced to the House of Commons yesterday. Let me give you some of the figures from this. Not all by any means, but some. He has pledged 38 billion for coronavirus for the rest of this year, 55 billion for coronavirus to tackle coronavirus next year. There's 6.3 billion extra for the NHS, 2.2 billion for schools, 400 million for the police, 337 million for the criminal justice system, 254 million for homelessness. 10 billion for foreign aid, 2 billion for HS2, high speed rail 2. Now, let's have a, a look at those. First of all, you'll notice that 400 million for police, 337 million for criminal justice, 254 million for homelessness combined is less than the two billion spent on HS2. So let's get this clear. We intend to spend more on a train than we do on policing, criminal justice system and homelessness combined. Spend more on a train. Now, I don't know if you're happy to spend more on a train than on the criminal justice system, policing and homelessness. Uh, I'm not, I don't think that's the best Use of money and for Britain would, of course, cancel HS2 for this reason. It's been a catastrophic waste of money. But for the, the effrontery, effrontery, the sheer audacity of announcing that we are spending more on, on a train, as I say, because that's what it is, than on police, criminal justice system and homelessness. But we're spending far, far more on foreign aid. Ten billion it's come down not nearly far enough 10 billion several times more than for policing criminal justice and homelessness combined we're spending several times that on foreign aid and we don't actually know where that's going i can tell you that a tiny percentage of money we spend to africa for example actually reaches starving or very, very uh, people struggling um, greatly. Why? Because it goes to corrupt governments, it goes to warlords, it goes to gangs. Um, it goes to pretty much everyone except the poorest people in those countries. There's no record of, of where it goes. No one is watching it. We essentially hand over billions. And I can guarantee you also that 10 billion is not the final figure when it comes to foreign aid. But to spend 10 billion on warlords in Africa while only spending 400 million on our own police service is the kind of spending I actually expect from a globalist government. But here's what's really interesting. In his speech, Sunak uh, said, and I'm going to quote directly, I'm going to read out to you exactly what he said. The Daily Mail is calling this his Thatcher moment or questioning, asking, is this his Thatcher moment. Now they're referring to Margaret Thatcher's notorious statement, or infamous statement, that there is no such thing as society. Now if you listen to what Sunak is saying, and as I say I will read it to you now, I don't think this is a pronouncement of political philosophy. I think it sounds a lot more like we're washing our hands of it. Let me read it to you. This is exactly what he said, I quote, we in government can set the direction. Better schools, more homes, stronger defence, safer streets, green energy, technological development, improved rail, enhanced roads, all investments that will create jobs and give every person in this country the chance to meet their potential. But it is the individual, the family and the community that must become stronger, healthier and happier as a result. This is the true measure of our success. The spending announced today is secondary to the courage, 
wisdom, kindness and creativity it unleashes. These are the incalculable but essential parts of our future and they cannot be mandated or distributed by government. These things must come from each of us and be shared freely because the future, this better country, is a common endeavour. Now, a little bit of word salad in that if you ask me, but there is also a strong hint that he is describing small government, which is a conservative value and one that I very much, very much share. But is he, in fact, taking the hands of the state off of the problems caused by policies of the state? We can set the direction, he said. Better schools, more homes, stronger defence. Set the direction. What does that mean? What is the role of government? Is it to throw money at an issue and then wash its hands and say, we're a small government government. We get no further involved than this. Absolutely, absolutely not. No matter how much you support, as I do, small government. Here's why. It is not the job of the government to spend money to throw more and more money at a problem. It's the job of the government to fix the problem. And if those pro problems are created by policy, which they are, it especially becomes the job of the government to fix it. We elect the members of parliament. From parliament is derived the government, from whoever wins, whatever party wins the most seats in parliament. That's our only voice. So for government to stand back and say, well, we give them the money. We give the NHS lots of money. After that, not our fault. All we're here to do is fund things. This is, again, no matter how much you support small government, this is not an example of small government. This is an example of government standing back and taking zero responsibility for the problems their policies unleash. All they ever do is throw more money at it and then think that their job is done. Oh no, sorry. They throw money at it and then they make a nice speech. And that speech is supposed to make us all feel comfortable. We're being looked after. This is what we pay. This is what we pay our government for. They make speeches. They throw money. They wash their hands of the rest. And this, to me, is, you know, it, it's, it's, it's not explicit by any means. But there is a hands-off, this is a hands-off government statement hidden in that word salad somewhere. So let's apply it to the figures here. So we've got billions for coronavirus promised. To do what? To do what for coronavirus? Is it going to be tax cuts for business? I doubt it. That's what I would do with the billions that we put aside to fight coronavirus. I would get the economy back on its feet with tax cuts. Not taxing, but tax cuts. He's given 6.3 billion for the NHS. Now, here's where the real hands-off, not our problem, we've given it money thing happens. There are billions, billions of pounds wasted in the NHS every year, be it on procurement or ridiculous projects that never come to fruition, and they've already spent billions on it. Billions of pounds a year is wasted by the NHS. Now, what the government does is give the NHS yet more of your money, not their money. This is not coming out of Rishi Sunak's pocket. It's your money. And they give it yet more. And they do nothing about the waste because apparently they're a hands-off government. Well, I'm sorry. But that money the NHS is wasting is your money. And the government has a duty to you. So when the NHS is wasting billions a year, the government should be doing something about that because that's your money. And instead, what they do is throw more of your money at the problem and then put their hands up and say, what, there's nothing to do with us. 2.2 billion for schools, great. Anything to say about the fact that schools are teaching children to hate Britain, its history, its heritage, its identity? The fact that the teachers won't even, teachers agree at meetings not to teach British values as they've been instructed to do. Anything? 
Anything to say about that, Boris Johnson's government? No? No, you're just going to throw 2.2 billion at it and let it carry on as it is, with children being politically propagated. You know, the political propaganda is ex extraordinary in schools. Children are being taught to hate this country. They're being taught what to think, not how to think. They're being taught that there are several genders. Everything, it, it, schooling is a mess. And yet Rishi Sunak thinks throwing 2.2 billion at the problem and then standing back and saying, rest of it's not my fault. Sorry, no, not good enough. The criminal justice system, this he's given how many million? Let's go back, 337 million to the criminal justice system, which is completely and utterly biased which once again is filled to bursting with left-wing propaganda, left-wing activist judges. It is entirely and completely biased. It has interpreted, for example, the Human Rights Act, to, not to protect our freedom of speech from it, but to protect every rapist and terrorist and murderer on the planet who wants to make a home in this country, threaten the safety of our people, and the judges decide to keep him here. They make a decision that the safety of this guy is more important than the safety of the British people. That's what the judiciary does. You need to fix that, Boris Johnson, not throw another few hundred million at it. This is not government. Policing, we've got 400 million for policing. Really? That's it? What are you going to do about the fact that the police get down on their knees to Black Lives Matter while allowing gangs of Muslims? I'm in trouble for, for saying these things on, on YouTube, but I've got to say it. Uh, turning a blind eye to the gang rape of children still going on all over the country the police are still ignoring it for political reasons and then they get on their knees to Black Lives Matter, a radical Marxist group exploiting a false desire for racial equality. They have no interest in racial equality. Exploiting a false decency. Most decent people believe in racial equality. Exploiting that decency to forward and to put forward radical Marxist uh, ideas and policies and the police are literally down on their knees to these people while turning a blind eye to rape gangs that's still happening but the government thinks this isn't their problem they're just going to throw 400 million at it and then wash their hands this is what this is what we have this is what we're getting now we pay them we vote for them they must answer to us on all of these issues they parliament is our only voice it is not we don't elect the civil service what donald trump would call the deep state the people who actually run things on a daily basis we don't elect them so we have no say we can't fix it when they go wrong and believe me they go wrong but we can't fix that we have no vote for the civil service the vote we have is for parliament and from parliament comes government. Now for government to wash its hands and say, I'm sorry, it's the civil service or the NHS management or the leader, leaders of the police, they're the problem. We can't do anything about it. We just give them money. Absolute nonsense. Not good enough. Parliament and government are supposed to be our voice. And for them to say, not our problem, is unacceptable. But to be quite honest with you, only to be expected. This is what we get. Enormous problems, real problems. Not, we're not talking about minor issues here. We're talking about the rape of children. We're talking about free speech. We're talking about how our money is spent. We are talking about whether or not we're going to recover after this coronavirus, if there is an after this coronavirus. This answers solutions for our society. We want from government. That's what we pay you for, and that's what we vote for. Make sure the basics are right. I don't want government interfering in my life. It's a completely different thing. But to say that when the criminal justice system is 
keeping rapists and murderers in the country that pose a threat to the British people for the British government to throw money at the justice system and say not our problem is unacceptable. We need and we deserve better than this. So I have an idea. Let's vote for better than this. Let's vote for Britain.